Hello and welcome to Mysteries of the Kingdom of Heaven. In this video, we're going to look at why did God save just Lot? And we're going to analyze Abraham's negotiations with God to save Lot. If you like these videos, like, share, comment, and subscribe. To find out why God saved just Lot, we have to go to Genesis 18, verse 16. And the men rose up from thence and looked toward Sodom, and Abraham went with them to bring them on their way. Verse 17, And the Lord said, Shall I hide from Abraham that thing which I do? Verse 18, Seeing that Abraham shall surely become a great and mighty nation, and all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him. Verse 19, For I know him, that he will command his children and his household after him, and they shall keep the way of the Lord, to do justice and judgment, that the Lord may bring upon Abraham that which he hath spoken of him. Verse 20, And the Lord said, Because the cry of Sodom and Gomorrah is great, and because their sin is very grievous. Verse 21, I will go down now and see whether they have done altogether according to the cry of it, which is come unto me. And if not, I will know. Verse 22, And the men turned their faces from thence and went toward Sodom. But Abraham stood yet before the Lord. Verse 23, And Abraham drew near and said, Wilt thou also destroy the righteous with the wicked? Verse 24, Per adventure there be fifty righteous within the city, wilt thou also destroy and not spare the place for the fifty righteous that are therein? Now this is where uh, the, um, the view is that this is where uh, Abraham's negotiation of Lot's life began from the number of 50 souls in Sodom. Now, I have in bold, in uh, highlighted the word in verse 24, per adventure. So let us see what this word means before we go any further. As I always do, let's go to the dictionary. And I encourage you to read your Bible with a dictionary. Well, now let's look at the meaning of per adventure. The meaning is absolutely nothing like the word as it is writ. What does it mean? It means a chance, a doubt, or uncertainty. So in Genesis 18, verse 24, what is Abraham the man? Remember, Abraham is a man. What is the man telling God Almighty who knows the end from the beginning? I repeat, the end from the beginning. Not the beginning from the end, but the end from the beginning. Abraham says to God, Hey God, there is a chance, there is doubt, there's uncertainty that there are 50 righteous in the city. Will you not spare the place for 50? I just want you to think about this. Man does not even know the beginning to the end of man's life, while God knows the end to the beginning. 
That is, God knows everything in reverse, which means he knows from Revelation to Genesis, which means, if you think about it, that in the end, man and woman will be reconciled back to God before Abraham, uh, before, sorry, not Abraham, before Adam, uh, Eve, and especially Adam bit on the forbidden fruit. So that is the from the end to the beginning. However, here we see Abraham advising God, God, that he, God, does not know how many righteous are in Sodom and Gomorrah. Isaiah 46 verse 10, declaring the end from the beginning and from ancient times, the things that are not yet done, saying, my counsel shall stand and I will do all my pleasure, all my pleasure. Verse 25, that be far from thee to do after this manner, to slay the righteous with the wicked, and that the righteous should be as the wicked, that be far from thee shall not the judge of all the, right, of all the earth do right. So what is Abraham saying to God in verse 25? He is questioning, if you look at the last sentence, whether the judge of all the earth is, he has the ability to do the right thing. Verse 26, And the Lord said, If I find in Sodom fifty righteous within the city, then I will spare all the place for their sakes. Verse 27, And Abraham answered and said, Behold now, I have taken upon me to speak unto the Lord, which am but dust and ashes. So here, Abraham acknowledges that next to God, he is dust and ashes. And yet, he still questions and ask if God, the righteous God, will make a righteous decision in destroying Sodom and Gomorrah. So we go to verse 28. Peradventure, that word again, chance. There is a chance, God, that there, that there shall lack five of the fifty righteous. Will thou destroy all the city for lack of five? So again, Abraham is questioning God, the righteous God. He's not questioning the, de the devil. Now he's questioning the righteous God. And he said, who said? God said, if I find there 45, I will not destroy it. So now Abraham's gone from 50 and he's now, as, they, as everyone says, he's negotiated for 45 souls in Sodom. Verse 29. And he spake unto him yet again. So Abraham spoke to who? Him. God is him. Again. And said, per adventure. Again, there's a chance. There shall be 40 found there. So now... From 50 to 45, he's gone down to 40. And God, he said, who said? God said, I will not do it for 40's sake. So in all of these things, you can see Abraham is kind of like questioning God if he will make the right decision in destroying Sodom and Gomorrah. Genesis 18, verse 30. And he said unto him, Oh, let not the Lord be angry, and I will speak. Per adventure, there's a chance, Lord, there shall be 30 righteous found there. And I don't know if you know it or not, God, but there's a chance there could be 30. 
and he said, I will not do it if I find 30 there. Verse 31, and he said, Abraham said, Behold now, I have taken upon me to speak unto the Lord. Per adventure, there's a chance there, God, that 20 shall be found there, 20 righteous. And I don't know if you know it or not, God, but there's a chance. And he said, I will not destroy it for 20's sake. Verse 32, and he said, Oh, let not the Lord be angry. We already saw that in verse 31, Abraham asked God not to be angry already. And now in 32, he's saying, God, don't be angry. And I will speak yet but this once. Per adventure, God, there's a chance that 10 shall be found there. 10 righteous. And I don't know if you know it or not, God, but there's a chance. And he said, I will not destroy it for ten's sake. Verse 33, and the Lord went his way as soon as he had left communing with Abraham. And Abraham returned unto his place. They say that Abraham negotiates a total of six times with God to save Lot from 50 souls down to 45 to 40 to 30 20 and finally down to 10. to confirm what actually abraham asked god for we have to go back to genesis 18 verse 24. per adventure there shall be 50 righteous now what did he say look in yellow bold he asked Wilt thou also destroy and not spare the place for the 50 righteous? Abraham did not say not spare the righteous. Abraham said not spare the place, which means the entire city of Sodom. Verse 26, and the Lord said, if I find in Sodom 50 righteous, within the city, then I will spare all the place. So it is clear from here that this negotiation, this so-called negotiation that everybody says was negotiating for Lot, he was, Abraham was actually negotiating for the Lot. He was not negotiating for the righteous. He was also negotiating for the wicked. If you are going to spare the entire city, haven't you negotiated for the wicked as well as the righteous? Verse 28, here uh, Abraham is now negotiating for the 45. And what did Abraham say? Thou wilt thou destroy all the city for lack of five? So lack of five means from 50, we've gone down to 45. And he said, if I find there 40 and five, I will not destroy it. So again, this is debunking the theory uh, that Abraham was negotiating for Lot. It is clear he was negotiating for the lot. Abraham was saving the wicked with the righteous. For Abraham wanted the city not to be destroyed. Verse 29. And Abraham said again, he said, if you find 40 there, and God said, I will not do it for forty's sake. So this is again and again proving that Abraham was not just negotiating for Lot. He was negotiating for the Lot, wicked included. He was also negotiating for the wicked. Verse 30. 
And he said unto him, O oh, let not the Lord be angry, and I will speak. Per adventure, there's a chance there shall be thirty be found there. And he said, God said, I will not do it. I will not do it means he will not destroy it at all. He will leave things as it is. He will leave the wicked to do as they were doing, and he will leave the righteous who are living alongside the wicked to be as they were. Verse 31, and he said, Behold now, I have taken upon me to speak unto the Lord, per adventure, there's a chance, there shall be twenty found there. And again, Abraham is asking God that I know, God, there might be twenty there. Do you know if there is twenty there? And God said, I will not destroy it for twenty sake. Again, again, Abraham is saying, leave the wicked, let them be for the sake of the righteous, leave the wicked, let them be. Let the wicked do, continue to do as they are doing. Verse 32, and again, Abraham is saying, this time per adventure, there's a chance, God, you might not be aware of it, but there might be 10 over there that shall be found there. And he said, God said, I will not destroy it for ten's sake. So this has totally debunked the theory uh, that Abraham negotiated for Lot. Abraham clearly negotiated for the Lot. And when I say for the Lot, he I mean for each and every one, the wicked as well as the righteous. He, for he said that because of the righteous, let the wicked get away with what they're doing. This is what he said, and I know people will disagree with this, but it is as written over there, and I don't know how you can argue against it, because if Abraham is not saying that because of the righteous, leave the wicked be, which means let them get away with it, let them do as they are doing. Now we have seen from verse 23 to verse 32, Abraham questions God six times. If the judge of all the earth has the ability to do right, if the judge of all the earth will let the wicked be as they are, leave them alone, let the wicked continue to be wicked. These are the things that was actually spoken if you look closely at the words of God. Now let us answer this question. Why did God come with two angels? And to, to, to see this, what we're going to do is we're going to go back to uh, Genesis 12, verse 7. And the Lord appeared unto Abraham. Abram. That time, Abra Abraham was Abram. Now we can see here that this time in Genesis 12, verse 7, the Lord appeared himself. He did not come with two angels. Now, if we skip to Genesis 18, verse 1, And the Lord appeared unto him in the plains of Mamre, and he sat in the tent door in the heat of the day. Verse 2, And he lift up his eyes and looked. Who did? This is Abraham. And lo, three men stood by him. When he saw them, he ran to meet them from the tent door and bowed himself toward the ground. So this time, in Genesis 18, we can see the Lord appear, and this time he brought two angels with him. So let us find out why 
God came with two angels. So we'll skip to verse 16. And the men rose up from thence, the two angels, and looked towards Sodom. And Abraham went with them to bring them on the way. Verse 17. And the Lord said, Shall I hide from Abraham that thing which I do? When the Lord said that, shall I hide from Abraham, who was he talking to? He was talking to the two angels. How many angels came with him? Two. Why did God come with two angels? We saw that in Genesis 12 verse 7, God came alone. So why did God bring two angels and what was God hiding from Abraham that thing that he was going to do? In verse 22 we see, and the men turned their faces from thence and went towards Sodom but Abraham stood yet before the Lord. Now we know that from verse 23 to verse 32, well, and verse 23 was the beginning of the so-called negotiations where Abraham is supposedly negotiating for Lot's life. Now, when the Lord said in verse 17, shall I hide from Abraham that thing I do? And in verse 22, the two angels turned their face and went towards Sodom. Then, before Abraham's negotiations, so-called negotiations even began, it was decided that God was going to do what he had already decided to do, which means that Abraham's negotiations counted for naught. It had no effect on it. It was already decided because the angels had left and went towards Sodom. Okay, now we go to Genesis 19 verse 1. They have left, and now they've come into Sodom and a point to make. And they came two angels. Those two angels who left in verse 22 have now entered and come to Sodom at even, in the evening. And Lot sat in the gate of Sodom. And Lot, seeing them, remember, the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, you got to see, you got to hear, and you got to understand. And Lot, seeing them, rose up to meet them, and he bowed himself with his face toward the ground. Remember, in Genesis 18, verse 1, what did Abraham do? He saw them and he bowed his face toward the ground, and so did Lot. Now, when you come to the gates of any city, there will be lots of lots. Any city you go to, there won't just be one lot, there will be lots of lots. Now, when Lot was there, there were Many other lots are hanging around the, the gates of the city. Only Lot saw them. The angels did not speak to Lot at all. They did not introduce themselves saying, Hello, we are two angels and God has sent us. No, they did not say that. There was no introduction. Lot, one lot, not the lots, one lot just saw them and he bowed to them. So, 
that is that is what happened when the two angels went into the gates and nobody else recognized the two angels what was that that was test number one remember remember in genesis 18 god said i will go and see for myself i will go and see for myself if if there are any righteous there god tests the people of sodom the second time genesis 19 verse 4 but before they lay down the men of the city even the men of sodom compassed the house round so they circled the entire house both old and young all the people from every quarter so every man old and young circled the house not a single man was not there verse 5 and they called unto lot and said unto him where are the men which came in to thee this night bring them out unto us that we may know them and not in a nice way verse 6 and lot went out at the door unto them and shut the door after him so lot's gone outside and shut the door verse 7 and said i pray you brethren do not so wickedly here is the second test only lot knew good from evil and we can see in genesis 19 verse 4 all the people both old and young circled the house and they came from every quarter so lot passed the second test god now tests the people of sodom a third time we skip to genesis 19 verse 12 and the men said unto lot hast thou here any besides son-in-law thy sons thy and thy daughters and whatsoever thou hast in the city bring them out of this place verse 13 for we will destroy this place because the cry of them is waxed and great before the face of the lord and the lord hath sent us to destroy it verse 14 but before we get to verse 14 we can see that abraham's nego so-called negotiations came to naught from here we can see that abraham said wilt thou destroy the city if there's any righteous there well we have found one righteous there lot was righteous and before abraham's negotiation left the angels had already left so it was a done deal it was already decided verse 14 and lot went out and spake to his sons-in-law which married his daughters and said get up get you out of this place for the lord will destroy this city but he seemed as one that mocked unto his sons-in-law now we have seen that lot saw the angels he recognized the angels and he bowed to the angels we have seen that lot knew good from evil this is the third test we can see that lot heard what he was told by the angels and he understood what he was told by the angels we can see from here that lot saw he heard and he understood he tried to save his sons-in-laws but they mocked him so why did 
God save just Lot. Well, there you go. It's been proved here. He could see, he could hear, and he understood. Genesis 19 verse 15. And when the morning arose, then the angels, angels hastened Lot, saying, Arise, take thy wife and thy two daughters, which are here, lest thou be consumed in the iniquity of the city. Verse 16. And while he lingered, the men laid hold upon his hand, and upon the hand of his wife, and upon the hand of his two daughters the Lord being merciful unto him. And they brought him forth and set him without the city. Verse 17. And it came to pass, when they had brought them forth abroad, that he said, Escape for thy life. Look not behind, neither uh, behind thee, neither stay thou in all the plain. Escape to the mountain. This means escape, run far away. Don't even stand in the plain, lest thou be consumed. This means that what was about to happen was probably, you could say, like a nuclear explosion. You had to go that far. You couldn't even stay in the, in the plains. Now, did God listen to to Abraham's so-called negotiations? No, he did not. God removed Lot and his family and destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. The word of God has proved that we don't see, we don't hear, and we don't understand. No amount of negotiating by you and me will save you and me. For God knows how to deliver the godly. God did not even need man to save the godly. In this case, we saw he came with two angels to save Lot. God does not need you to make him aware of who to save and how righteous God should be. The only way you will be saved is if you can see, hear, and understand. It's as complicated as that. Now just take a step back and think about this for a moment. For all those who accept that Abraham was negotiating on behalf of Lot and that's what saved Lot, if man can negotiate on behalf of man, it means that man knows better than God. If man knows better than God, then man is God and God is man. The argument we have seen has been totally debunked that Abraham was why Lot was saved. We have, it, the word of God, not me, has totally debunked that he was not saved because of because anything of Abraham, Lot could see, hear, and understand, and that was the only reason he was saved. You have to be righteous to be saved. You cannot just skip it and somebody prays for somebody and that person is saved. The Word of God has proved that. Genesis 19 verse 24. Then the Lord rained upon Sodom and upon Gomorrah brimstone and fire from the Lord out of heaven. Verse 25, And he overthrew those cities and all the plain and all the inhabitants of the cities and that which grew upon the ground, which means no human, no animals, no plants, nothing was saved. Everything was gone. And what did Abraham ask for? That for from 50 down to 10, even if you find 10, don't destroy the city. That's what Abraham, Abraham's nego so-called negotiation was. Verse 26, but his wife looked back from behind him and she became a pillar of salt. 
This means that only Lot and his two daughters were saved. What did it mean that his wife looked back? It means that when you look back, your heart longs for where you've looked at. And therefore, when you follow the stories of what was happening in, in between Abraham and Lot, you could now figure out that maybe a lot of that, a lot of what was happening was because of Lot's wife. And there you have it. Why did God save just Lot? 2 Peter 2 verse 4. For if God spared not to the angels that sinned, but cast them down to hell and delivered them unto chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment. We're going to skip to verse 7. And delivered just Lot, vexed with the filthy conversation of the wicked. Who had the filthy conversation of the wicked? The people of Sodom and Gomorrah. Verse 8, For that righteous man dwelling among them in seeing and hearing. There you have it. Vexed his righteous soul from day to day with their unlawful deeds. So there you have it. Lot was not saved by the negotiations of Abraham. It was all done and dusted before his negotiations even began. The angels had left. They were there to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah, and they were not going to change it. However, God gave the people three chances, three tests. They failed it. Only Lot could see hear and understand. We have seen why Lot was saved. Now, why did Yeshua come? If you answer to be crucified to pay for our sins, the answer is not completely correct. Yeshua came to do something so that his actions on the cross will cover our sins. Unless you know and understand, unless you see, hear, and understand why he came, what he did on the cross is meaningless, for many are called, but few are chosen. John 9, verse 39, And Yeshua said, For judgment, for judgment, the judge has come to judge, remember, what did Abraham say? The judge of all the earth. There you go. There you go. For judgment, I am. Who did A Abraham at the time, not Abraham, Abraham meet in the, uh, the, at the burning bush? Who? I am. I am come into this world that they which see not might see, and that they which see might be made blind. Now, I'm going to do another video on covering this, another amazing parable, just, just for everyone watching the videos, just to note that Yeshua speaks in parables. So I encourage you to read the Bible in a different way, use the dictionary, and seek the Holy Spirit. You have been watching Mysteries of the Kingdom of Heaven. My name is Raj Singh. Matthew 13, verse 10. And the disciples came and said unto him, Why speakest thou unto them in parables? Verse 11. He answered and said unto them, disciples, Because it is given unto you to know, disciples, the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, which we now know means any truth that is unknowable except by divine revelation. Yeshua goes on to say in verse 11, but to them, to the people, it is not given. We have to seek the Holy Spirit to receive and know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven.
Verse 13, therefore I speak to them in parables, because they seeing see not. What, what does that mean? You've seen the words in the Bible, Genesis 18 and 19, and you see not. Then the words of Genesis 19 and 19 were spoken with your own ears, you hear not, and therefore neither do you understand. These videos are made to encourage you to read the Bible in a different way. You don't need me, you don't need man. As we have seen in this um, video, that God knows how to save the godly. He did not even need man. He came with two angels. So if you like these videos, like, share, comment, and subscribe. God bless.